Hello everyone. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We have created a pre-departure wellbeing recording for you um, in the hope that we will give you some practical self-help tips and strategies to help you with your time abroad. We have found that students who take the time to plan and consider challenges that they may face while abroad feel more confident and better prepared in achieving their personal goals and hopefully will have the best possible experience in their time abroad. So I'm going to um, take you through a PowerPoint now. My name is Kira Harkin and I am one of the wellbeing advisors here in the Student Guidance Centre. And my name is Tara McCready and I'm one of the Assistant Disability and Wellbeing Advisors also based in the Student Guidance Centre. So I'm going to talk you through some practical tips to consider before your trip abroad. But first of all, we want you to have a think about whenever you go away, because we want you to focus on the fact that it's a positive adventure that you're embarking on. I know change can leave us feeling quite disorientated and insecure, but being prepared and having things in place before you leave can ease those feelings of worry and anxiety. Your time abroad is all about meeting new friends, exploring new places, the opportunities to travel and learning about a new culture. So firstly, we're going to focus on how you adapt to change and how you can help yourself be more prepared for adapting to this change. You may want to create a checklist of the things that we will discuss as well. So you will have to create a new routine. To help with this, you can create a weekly planner to be able to manage your time effectively. This could incorporate your class timetable, your study timetable, your reading times, fitting in your three meals per day, and also taking time for your hobbies and socialising with your new friends. It's also really important that you incorporate your sleeping patterns and your times. You could take time to plan your route to and from university from where you will be living and what your method of transport will be. Google Maps is a really great way to start to familiarise yourself with what the streets and buildings will look like as well. Find out who your lecturers will be and if you can try and get their contact details so if you ever need to ask them a question about your academic work they're there to help. Also think about the practicalities for when you move over. So you might need to register with a new GP and provide specific documentation for them. You may also need to open up a local bank account as well. It would also be a really good idea to research where the local pharmacy is and the post office so that you can send letters and those important parcels to friends and family back home. So next we're going to talk a bit about your new accommodation. So if you're living in student accommodation, you could ask them ahead of time if there's any social media groups to be able to meet your new housemates so that you can get to know them before your trip. We know that forming new friendships can have its own challenges, so it's really important to be aware that there's always going to be a settling in period. But it's about knowing who, you, who your key supports are whenever you're abroad and also linking in with those at home to discuss any concerns that you might have. You can think about what you'll need then as well for your new bedroom and your kitchen space. You could check online to see what utensils and amenities will already be there so that you aren't purchasing anything unnecessary. It may also be a really good idea to research any events happening in and around campus. Your, your new university will more than likely have some welcome events for new students. And if you're living in halls, then your accommodation may also do in-house events. Both of these are a really great opportunity to be able to meet new people and form those new friendships. It's important as well that you think about any welfare support you may need whenever you're out there. Introduce yourself to the staff on site and find out who it is that you would talk to if you're ever feeling homesick, if you ever need help with something or if you just need someone to talk to. So next we're going to focus a bit on finances. So you might want to think about your first expenses for whenever you first move over, what your accommodation fees will be, what will need paid there and then, any amenities or groceries you will need to buy as soon as you arrive. You could also think about creating a budget, whether this is weekly or monthly. You can, write down, you can note down how much you will need for traveling if you need to use transport for class. You could write down what you plan to spend on food each week 
and any extra costs for socialising, for travelling or for those flights when you come back home. You can also plan your, we your meals for the weeks ahead. Um, for your grocery shopping, you could visit a local food market or those bigger supermarkets, which actually work out cheaper for you. You could also think about batch cooking and then freezing your meals so nothing is going to waste. This is also a good idea to get to know your housemates if you cook and eat together as well. Also, if you have the time within your class timetable, you could think about finding part-time work if you do need it. You could ask around campus to see if there's any on-campus jobs for students. All of these tips will help you manage your money and prevent you from feeling overwhelmed financially. So I am going to pass back to my colleague Kira, who's going to now talk you through some practical steps to help look after your well-being while you're abroad. Thank you, Tara. So there are positive steps that we can all take to look after and protect and nurture our own well-being. The Public Health Agency have recommended that if we incorporate take five into our daily routines during difficult or challenging periods in our life, we can all improve or protect our well-being and mental health. So most of us know when we are mentally and physically well, but sometimes we do need a little support to keep well. So here are the five simple steps to help maintain and improve your well-being. Try to build these into your daily life and think of them as your five a day for well-being. Connect with others, keep active, take notice, take time to stop, pause, take in the moment or look around you. Keep learning, so not just academic learning. Don't be afraid to try something new or rediscover an old hobby or sign up for a course. So it's all about learning new things will make you feel more confident and make you feel more fulfilled. And then also giving to others. But also remember that we have to be well first before we can give to others also. OK, so as we've reinforced, preparation is key to any trip and the key to success. It may be beneficial for you to have a think about when you are most well and when you are at your best. Try to make a list of all the activities, routines or habits that make you feel most well and protect and nurture your well-being. We call these your wellness tools. Before you travel, do think about how you will incorporate your wellness tools into your daily routines. If you're concerned about particular stressors while you're away and travelling abroad or concerned that it might be difficult to adapt to change, please do contact us at Student Wellbeing. You can email us and what we can do is we can together create a wellness recovery action plan for you. We can think about what your stressors are. We can discuss how you notice early signs or symptoms of stress and anxiety and what that feels like for you and we can make plans of how we get you support if you need it when you're abroad. Before you travel do research all the wellbeing supports available to you while you're away but also remember that you can contact student wellbeing and access home supports if you need to. Tara has touched upon in the presentation about ensuring you know what mental health supports you may need while you're abroad, as this may change and those supports may need access from different services. But please do email us at Student Wellbeing if you would like to talk through further what these supports may be when you go abroad. You can call us on the drop-in line between 11 a.m. in the morning and 3 p.m. You can also access free counselling while you're abroad. And we've included the helpline number here of how you register. And you can also contact Student Union or the Learning Development Service Support while you're abroad and access those supports. So thank you very much for listening. I'm now going to pass you over to our colleague, John Finnegan, who is going to talk through other supports that you may wish to consider when you travel abroad. So in terms of pre-departure planning, as has been said before, plan, plan and plan some more. The more prep you do beforehand, 
the more that will help with the smooth and stress less transition to your new experience. So do your research before you go. For instance, take a virtual tour of your new surroundings. Maybe link in with former students who have lived in that area. Or you can meet with the staff from the Global Opportunities team for some more advice. Another good idea might be just to find out where your local embassy and consulate is located. And a quick Google search should help with that. Or you could take a language course, um, and which will help with integrating before you go. Another good idea is to organize your finances before you go. So that could be changing currency um, and also help with your technology needs. I.e., You may need a, mo a new mobile phone SIM, etc. For peace of mind, maybe photocopy important documents and just have them with you. And also pack smart, so only really take what you need. In terms of tips for connecting and integrating, as we've already said, staying connected is one of the five steps to well-being. So it's really important that you continue this while in placement. See this as an opportunity to meet with new friends, experience new cultures and learn new skills. Also keep in regular contact with your friends and family back home as well. Tips might be checking out the local student clubs and societies, joining the local gym and enrolling in classes, which is another good way to meet people. Um, also joining a sports club is a great way to meet people and um, just an integrate into the local community. And you could check out the local cultural attractions and events before you go. And as I said, learning the language could be important, but also setting up a, a language exchange partner could be another way of meeting with, with locals. So your safety while in placement. So the majority of placements are 99.9% .9 safe. However, there's some steps you can take to enhance your safety. Be aware of your safety at all times, including your personal information and your possessions, and always trust, trust your, gut, your gut instinct. Before traveling, you can add emergency contact numbers onto your phone, including the local police and any support numbers. In terms of travel, you know, studying abroad means a new city and environment, which is exciting. So enjoy your new surroundings safely. Before traveling, you could sign up for travel warning notifications through the foreign office. And you could also buy some travel insurance for peace of mind. When traveling by public transport, you know, wait in a well-lit, kind of busy area and sit near other people. But don't be afraid of moving should someone's behavior cause you any concern. And when using official taxis, you know, hail all taxis from the official taxi ranks. If you feel comfortable, sit in the back and avoid giving away your personal details. That's another good idea is to have your fare ready as well. And remember, always trust your gut instinct. In terms of accommodation, when choosing where to stay, make sure it's secure and the area feels safe. And it's also a good idea maybe to visit that area at night as well as during the day. Make sure you meet all your prospective flatmates and just trust your instincts again when deciding whether or not to move in. And when you leave your room, either in halls or in the private apartment, always lock your door and shut the windows, even if you're just popping out um, for a few minutes. And also consider the risks before inviting someone that you've just met into your room. Uh, and don't let anyone into the block by either holding a door unless you know them or you know, you've checked their ID. And finally, if you're suspicious about anything, report it to the campus security, the local security or the police. In terms of safety when out and about, always just be aware of your surroundings, particularly when you're chatting on your mobile phone or listening to music, as this can distract you. Maybe think about getting a personal safety alarm and keep it in an easily accessible place. If you're in it, try to stick to busy streets and near older people and avoid any dangerous spots such as poorly lit areas. You can ask if there's any areas around your halls that should be avoided. And sometimes some shortcuts might be great during the day but have a reputation amongst other students for being unsafe at night. So just do your research around that. Another good idea is just to travel in groups, especially while traveling at night, and there's safety in numbers. But traveling at least one other person at all times, you have less chance for any unwanted attention. And finally, just be aware of pickpockets. Keep your valuables protected at all times. And when you're going out at night, try to plan ahead. Make sure someone knows where you're going, who you're meeting and when you expect to return. Always plan how you're going to get there and get home. Um, when you're out and about, don't be leaving your drink unattended. If you start to feel unwell, seek assistance from venue staff. When you're out with friends, look out for each other. Consider traveling back together or checking in when you arrive home safely. 
find out why you're in placement, you can still access our report and support system at Queen's and you'll see the details there of how to access the system. So on there you'll find um, support pages and also access to report any concerns that you have. So that's the end of this section on connected and integrating when in placement and also keeping safe. I'm now going to hand over to Karen, my colleague from Disability Services, who's going to talk about disability supports while in placement. Hello, I'm Karen Harvey and I'm one of the disability officers within the disability services team. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the disability supports that you may require whenever you're studying abroad, placement abroad. One of my main recommendations would be sharing your ISA with your host university, as this contains information about your disability or your long-term health condition and a list of reasonable adjustment supports that you currently have whilst you're at, at your home university and that then can be used to put some of the support that you may require when you are at your host university. It's therefore important to register with your host disability services as soon as you can. Um, the supports may differ, how they organise supports may differ, the policies and procedures they have around reasonable adjustment supports may differ, so it's important to keep that in mind. So that's why it's important to register with the host university, find out as much information as possible and share your, your ISA with them as soon as you can and so that your supports can be considered. If you're going on a placement and you have very specific support that you require when you're on placement in relation to your disability or your health condition, it's important that you contact disability services to ensure that those specific supports can be included within your individual student support agreement or your ISA. So if you look at your ISA and it currently doesn't have any specific supports in relation to a placement within it and you feel that you do need supports, contact your disability officer as soon as you can and you, that you can have a discussion with your disability officer to get any specific support you may require and then your ISA can then be edited and updated. Many of you will have received some form of funded support, probably um, the Disability Students Alliance or DSA. And sometimes that support can continue whilst you are studying abroad or in placement, but there will be eligibility criteria that you will need to, to follow and that will, will apply. So if you're unsure, it's important to contact Disability Services or the Needs Assessment Centre for further information about that. And we can help you then contact your funding body to see whether your DSA support can continue whilst you are away. Other things to consider would be your health and general supports that you have in relation to your disability or your health condition. So things like ensuring that you have enough medication with you when you are going abroad and registering with the doctor whilst you're there to ensure that you receive the support that you need to manage your condition the best you can when you are abroad. If you have any appointments scheduled or you usually have appointments, regular appointments with health professionals when you're at home, it's important that you make contact with them before you leave just to ensure that they're aware that you are going to be away and perhaps be able to schedule those appointments remotely to ensure that your support um, can, is, is continued whilst you are away and you don't lose out. So you can connect with us in a number of ways. For general inquiries, you can email us on disability.office at qub.ac.uk. You can check out our website, there's lots of information there about, the, about supports and who we are, frequently asked questions, etc. Our telephone number there is on screen and we also have our daily drop-in and you can access that remotely if you are away. Um, we have a mobile number there on screen. If you have queries about Disabled Students Alliance or funded support, uh, the best people to contact would be the Needs Assessment Centre, um, that team, which is, e you can email on NAC at qub.ac.uk. Um, we have a website there, information with lots of information about um, DSA funding and eligibility criteria, and also we have a telephone number. Good luck when you're away. <laughs>